Okay, hello. Hello and good morning from Betty Boo and I. Um, Betty's come on to tell you, well in fact I've got to be careful about saying the word, H-A-I-R-C-U-T, okay. She's come on to tell you she's having one of those next Tuesday. If I say the word, she gets, <laughs> she doesn't like going basically and she'll get upset. I am keeping her here at the moment because I'm tickling her tummy. Are you looking at everybody? Are you looking? And there's a little treat just here, a special treat made of um, insects, carrot and apple. <laughs> I think it's made of beetles. It's a company called Yora and they make um, all her food actually and it's high in protein, but it's made of insects and it's very sustainable. Anyway, that's not why you've come here. You don't want to know about dog food and insects. So let's just do that. And then Betty's going to say goodbye and I'm going to sit down and show you how to needle felt. Okay, Boo? Yeah? Time to go now. <laughs> Come on, off you get. Off you get. That's it. Fantastic. Well, hello and good morning and welcome everybody to my studio where I'm going to be showing you needle felting, 3D needle felting. Um, it's a beautifully rainy day today. Actually, since we started doing these live tutorials, I don't think I can remember one where it's just been raining. It's been a bit overcast a couple of times. Most of the time it's been really hot. And obviously yesterday and the day before here in the UK, it was really hot. So today all is well, it's a bit cooler. Um, although I have to say it's still really hot in the studio for some reason. Um, but I am determined to wear my Gertrude cardigan regardless of that. Every time I put this on, I'm just slightly too warm, but hey, never mind. Um, so 3D needle felting. So I've got my um, equipment in front of me here. Before I launch into all of that though, I'm going to run through how to create a simple 3D shape using merino wool tops. And the other things I'll be using are felting needles. If you don't know what a felting needle is, it's very different from a sewing needle or a knitting needle or anything else like that. It's very, very sharp. I'll talk you through this a bit more in a second. I'm gonna be using felting needles. I'm also going to be using foam to work onto because obviously you're stabbing into something, you need some protection underneath. But that's pretty much it. I'm also going to be used to using a tiny bit of our Angelina glitter fibres, which interestingly, needle felt really well. So um, some things don't like needle felting. So if you wanted to use silk, for example, really difficult to use that. Some artificial um, other fibres that we stock aren't brilliant. But interestingly, the Angelina glitter fibres are great. Everything else is merino wool. And I'm going to be showing you, I'm, I'm going to start off by showing you a fish shape to, to make, okay? So there's a few fish here that I've made that you can see. Um, and we have a fish um, kit as well. I'm also going to um, show you, after I've done that, I'm just going to touch very briefly on how to do a bird shape, okay? And this is very similar to the course that I run here, which is, needle felted birds and fish. Now, once you've grasped how to make a simple shape using needle felting, you could then go on to make anything you like, be that rabbits, dogs, elves, whatever it is, a human replica of your husband, which I have actually done a couple of years ago. I made, I should have brought it, sorry. Is it life size? Is it life size? <laughs> I wonder what you're gonna say. Then. No, it was the one I made you of you in bed. In a, in a sardine tin. Don't talk about that one. <laughs> Don't talk about that one. So basically, I went through this phase of making um, Mexican nichos, uh, so, um, old sardine tins with needle felted stuff inside. And I did make Chris, uh, he was this end, needle felted. And then he was in bed, so he had a bit of the metal over him. And then it had the handle on the side and it played happy birthday. And he was having birthday breakfast in bed. Anyway, I digress. I don't have that with with me. Oh, this is actually a sardine. Actually, if I just put it here on the overhead shot, you can have a quick look at that. Um, so this is a sardine I made quite some time ago, actually, now. And um, it, this is an old sardine tin. And then I have um, painted it inside and put some beads and some decorations around the edge. Okay, so 
that is what I like to do. I know it's weird, but you know, that's just me. So I'm going to start off by showing you the fish shape and then we can take it from there. And if you've got any questions or anyone wants to ask me about any of the other shapes, you can. I'll talk to you about the kits that we sell afterwards. And I've got the actual kit sampled here that I've made as well to show you. So let's get cracking. So there's a few key things that you need one of which is the 38 gauge star felting needle. You could use any felting needle actually, but this is my go-to. This is my all rounder that I love, all right? It is star shaped in profile. So if you had a microscope and you looked at it head on, it would be a star. So it's got lots of facets and sides and it's got the felting needle little barbs in it as it goes down, okay? And as you stab this in and out of wool, it felts it together. Now it felts it together in a very different way from when you're wet felting, because when you're wet felting, you're encouraging the little microscopic scales to open and interlock using soap, alkalinity, or acidity, but in this case, soap, alkalinity, and water. With needle felting, it's completely dry. There's no soap, there's no water, and you're just using these little barbs as you stab them in and out of the wool. That's what joins it all together and felts it. So I just wanted to show you um, an example here, for example, where I've got the fish shape. Now this end of it here has been felted and is much smaller and kind of shrunken and reduced in size compared to this side here, which is still sort of a bit puffy and woolly and hasn't been needle felted as much. So interestingly, the wool still shrinks, but it's kind of, it's kind of a bit of a cheat because it's working in a different way. It's not shrinking per se as you would shrink clothes. It's reducing in size because you're getting rid of all the air essentially, and you're matting it together. So it becomes reduced in size. So you can see when I finished a piece, for me anyway, because this is how I like to do it, it's really firm and hard and solid, okay? Um, it can still be a bit puffy and a bit, a bit bigger. It, that's not to say that that's wrong, but for me, I just like to needle felt things until they're quite solid and firm and there's not that much give to them or air still inside of it. So um, I'm going to run through how you would go about doing that. So if we can switch to this overhead shot here, I just want to talk a little bit about these needles to start with. And I've got my special, um, my special, oh, wrong way around, phone here to show you a close up of these needles. Now we stock two different needles, okay? This is the 38 gauge star one that I was just talking about, okay? You can see when it's made that it, it gets to a point here where it becomes much smaller. And then you can see if I twiddle it around, maybe you can just see these little barbs at the end here. These are the bits that are gonna stick in and out of your wool and make it all felt together. And this is made for finer, faster uh, needle felting. We do, however, also stock a 36, oopsie, a 36 gauge triangular. Now, can you see when I'm turning this round, hopefully you can see, you can see the three very clear sides of the triangle. One, two, three, as the light catches them. And you can see, hopefully, the little barbs on those as well. Now, this is another felting needle that you can use, but this one is for much coarser work. And it's often used, I often use this right at the beginning if I can't get the shape right. It will make, um, much bigger marks and holes in the work and it will um, it will kind of work really it will make it all happen faster so it might indent it more than you'd like i think if you want to do it sort of more slowly and more considered then you would go for the other felting needle but it's helpful to have these as well and i'll show you hopefully as I go along. So I always just keep them in my foam here. I've got the, the 36s are here, the 38s are here. Then I've got this strange contraption as well, which is our multi-needle tool, okay? This is actually filled with four of the 38 gauge star needles. It's really simple. You just pop them in and then you just do the screw up on the top. And this comes with our basic um, needle felting kit. You get that tool and four needles and the foam. So that's what that is. That is used to obviously to stab four at once, which is helpful and useful, but you don't want to use this right at the beginning because it will kind of make too much of a difference. And if your piece is still full of air, this is 
really used for sort of further down the line for refining things and um, making them look better later on. So I'm just going to stick that in there for now. Then if we can come back to the overhead shot, please, Chris. Um, I'm just going to talk you through using these felting needles safely. Now, they are incredibly sharp. They're much sharper than a, a sewing needle. OK, so you want to make sure that you don't stab your fingers. You should always hold them about half the way down. Have I got this in the right place, Chris? Can you see what I'm doing on Instagram? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you always want to hold it about half the way down. So don't hold it right at the top. Don't hold it right at the bottom, about halfway down. And then when you're working, you want to keep it fairly upright. You don't want to be stabbing it at an angle. All right. Now, when you are working, you want to make sure that you keep your fingers out of the way. Believe you me, it is very, very painful if you stab your fingers with one of these, you will draw blood. And I do always have, a, um, I always have a spare box of plasters on the table. What do you call them in America? Band-Aids, is it? Is that what they call them? I don't know. You know, the sticky things you put over a cut on your finger. Um, I always do have a secret box on the table when I run a workshop, but I, I keep quiet about it because I don't want everyone to think, oh, I can stab myself, it's fine. <laughs> no, I mean, please don't stab yourselves. It's so painful. Um, so I'm just going to show you, if you go back to the overhead shot, I want to show you, like, keep your fingers like about an inch away from where you are stabbing, if you can. Now, if you're stabbing something really, really tiny, like if you're doing a tiny, tiny detail, you know, and you need to, to have, like, try it, just, just be mindful of it. But the other thing I sometimes suggest is if you've got your wool in place, you could, use, you could hold your wool with one needle and you can stab with the other needle and that keeps your fingers completely out of the way. Now, the other thing I just want to mention is that they will snap, all right? They tend to snap here or further down. They will snap if you stab too hard and violently. This is not a voodoo stabbing session. I mean, by all means, take out your, um, what's the word? Take out your, your anger, or if you've got any, um, on, on your needle felting, but do it gently. <laughs> Don't stab it really violently because you will snap the needles. So the way to not snap the needles, and I very rare, rarely snap one. I've probably snapped less than five the whole time I've ever been using them. Um, it's to stab gently. I know I'm using the word stab, poke, stab, stab. Um, and that means just using, just, uh, not using any, any force behind the needle. It's just gentle. It's gentle. Just think gentle and you won't stab it. I have to admit, if we go back to this shot again, if you're stabbing into something that's already quite firm because you've already needle felted it, it's more likely to snap then than if you're starting afresh with soft wool. Okay, it's when it gets firm, it was most likely to snap. So be very gentle with them. Keep your fingers out of the way and then you should be fine. I think we've got a little question. Not so much a question, but... Have you got me on the camera or the needle felting? I've got you now. Okay, go ahead. Uh, um, because, because of this specific one, it's very close stuff. Yeah. Um, you need to move your pad further up so you're not obst uh, uh, obstructed by the text. Okay. on people's messages okay. or those are the people that are on Instagram okay. could go over to YouTube okay. and watch it on but, YouTube. Uh, if, it, if, if I was on Instagram I wouldn't do that and right no. now. So. Okay. Thanks right. for your suggestion. Just saying. Moving it up. So it wasn't okay. a question. It wasn't a it question. It was an interjection. If you like. Okay. Goodness, anyway, I've moving... interjected. <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> moving swiftly on. All right. Enough about the needles, you get the gist, right? Stop sniggering, please. Okay, so I'm now going to talk you through, um, I'm getting, I'm so hot, I'm getting a sula. You know what that is? A sweaty upper lip alert. Anyway, um, I'm going to start talking you through how to use the, the wool and how to, to get it to go into the shape that you want it to go into. If you've never done it before, I highly recommend starting with a fish shape because it's simple and that's what I do on my courses. I also say to people, if this doesn't work the first time, don't try it. Like, it's almost like someone stabs it a few times and then feels like they have some sort of affinity with it and they can't start again. And it's like, it's already a fish. I've named it. 
No, this is my fish. I can't start again. We must persevere. No, if it's clearly not working, you must start again. And it's ob ob um, sometimes it doesn't work, often not work, because you haven't rolled it up correctly. So I'm going to show you that now. Right, overhead shot. Here we go. I've got a piece of wool that's about oh, a ruler's length long, 12 inches, 30 centimetres, whatever you want to call it isn't it? Yeah, I think it is, roughly. Now, obviously, the less wool you use, the smaller it will be, the more wool you use, the bigger it will be. A good idea is to just bunch it up like this before you start to give yourselves a rough guide of how big it's going to end up. I mean, I recommend doing that with all needle felting, to be honest with you. So whatever you're going to make, if you're making a necklace and you want to needle felt the balls, I recommend pulling off equal amounts for each bead and then scrunching them up and making sure it's going to end up the size you want it because there's nothing more infuriating than making it and thinking, yeah, it's too small, I need to start again. Okay, so do that because that's a good idea first. Then this is how you need to go about it. You need to get as much of the air out of this as possible. Am I in the right place for Instagram? Because this is the most important bit. Yes. OK. All right. So what I'm doing is I've got the length of it here and I'm just going to start rolling it up from one end. Okay, I would normally do this actually directly on the table rather than on the phone. Let's do it like that. Rolling it up from one end and keeping the bulk of the wool in the center. So the fish's belly gets fatter here and it tapers towards each end. OK. So I'm just going to do that with this piece here that I've got in this kind of coppery colour. And then when I get to the end, who remembers the Smurfs? Chris, do you remember the Smurfs? No idea what you're talking about. You do. I was going to ask you to sing the song. There's a Smurf song. Anyway, Smurfs had like hair like this. They were these little animals in the 70s, was it? You don't know what I'm talking about. I think you're talking about gonks, not No, 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 they're worse than us too. Anyway, this was their hair. Anyway, when you get to this bit, make sure it's nice and wispy, okay? And then we're just going to do that, all right? So that is your shape. Now, I know it looks a little bit precarious. I'm just going to bring my foam back now, okay? And then I'm going to take my 38 gauge star needle felting needle, and I'm going to start stabbing it keeping my fingers out of the way. I'm going to start stabbing it on this side to start with, just turning it as I go like this, okay? And then I'm going to do the other side. So it looks a little bit like a croissant, all right? But we're not going to worry too much about that. You can just tease these little folds out a little bit if you need to. Then I would turn it round, okay? And I would do the same thing on the other side. And I'm constantly turning it and rolling it as I go. And me just doing this for a couple of minutes will hold it together once I've been all the way around on both sides. All right, so that's now roughly held together. Now, what I want to emphasize here is how dense this is, okay? It's not too puffy, all right? I'm going to do it again now with another piece of wool and I'm going to show you how not to do it because I think that's always helpful. Okay, so how not to do it would be always tease your piece of wool out a little bit first before you start so it's not too bunched together. So how not to do it would be to roll it up just quite gently. So I'm not, I'm not pressing down on it at all. And there. So now I'm left with a shape that's similar, but it's very, very squidgy. OK, it's got a lot of air in it. And if I start to press down into this, there's a lot to contend with. Now, that's not to say that I couldn't eventually um, make this work, this one that's wrong. However, it would take me way, way longer because there's so much more air in it. OK, so these are the two. This one is much more dense and there's less air. This one much more puffy. Lots, you can see, look, it's so sort of like all over the shop. So. If, so what I was saying earlier about not being able to start again from the start, what you need to try and do if you do this is to go, oh no, actually no, 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 no. And then you undo it and you start again, all right? Uh, it may have a little bit of resistance if you have stabbed it, but then you would just literally 
pop it down here. And the important thing, I'm just going to show you it again because this is what people struggle with more than anything else with these needle felted 3D shapes, is how you deal with the wool right at the beginning. So I'm just going to go through this again. So we are rolling it up, okay. It's, it's not the easiest thing doing it on the foam because the foam's got some resistance to it. So we're, we're pressing down as hard as possible as we're rolling it up to try and get rid of the air inside the wall. All right, and you can see that my end result is actually quite a lot smaller because there's less air in it. Okay, here we go. Actually, that's, that's probably a better job than the one I started with. Let's continue with this one. Now, I just wanted to show you these other needles. So if you are going to use these other needles, you could use them right at the start. They're, they're quite um, effective at changing shapes quite dramatically. All right. So if you want something that's subtle, you can get rid of the croissant effect look by just teasing it out a little bit like that. You, if you want something that's quite subtle and you've got to the point of refining your shape, and making it look uh, perfect and refined and adding details, you wouldn't use these 38 gauge uh, triangulars. You would, you would use the star ones that I was talking about at the beginning. We only sell two sizes. Some places sell loads of sizes. You can get smaller ones. I've never seen the need for it personally. However, if you're about to become a needle felting meister, and you're going to turn all of your time to creating little shapes for people and doing replicas of people's dogs and selling the most beautiful bunnies on Etsy or whatever it is you're planning. Uh, then maybe you might want to seek out some finer ones so that your, your end, your finished work looks very refined. All right. That's what I would say. However, all the pieces I've ever made for my shop or my books that I've written. I've only ever used the 38 gauge style. And yes, if you look very, very closely, you might be able to see, let me use this camera again, you might be able to see some little pock marks. But I mean, I don't know. I'm in the wrong place, aren't I? I'm not in. No, am I? No. Um, so yeah, you can you can just see it. But to be honest with you, that is not a concern of mine. <laughs> All right. So Moving on from this then, so I'm just using this 38 gauge, uh, no I'm not, I can't even remember what I'm doing now. I'm using the 36 triangular, which I've now forgotten, oh it's there. Right, so I'm just going to quickly now work on this one and just try and refine it a little bit for you and show you how the refining works. Let's just get it to hold together first of all. So I'm just going to give it this kind of inaugural stabbing. Oh God, that sounds awful, doesn't it? The inaugural stabbing took place at the Gillian Gladrag Fluffatorium in Dorking. Uh, anyway, so I'm just going to get that to hold together using this 36 gauge triangle and needle. And then I'm going to move over and I'm going to give you some top tips on using the 38s. All right, so that's pretty much held together now. It's not going to unravel is the point. OK, so now we need to refine that. Now, you can carry on by using the 38 gauge star on its own or you can hold two together. So literally just hold two of them in your hand like this and stab two together. Now, this might cause it to um, indent more than you'd planned, in which case just go back to one again. But I just want to talk to you very briefly now about why you wouldn't now use this straight away. So if you use this straight away, it will really make so much of a difference that you'll get it all kind of wibbly wobbly and, and, and you'll kind of lose the shape of it. So I would keep that for later, if at all. You don't always need to use it, it's up to you. And I'd carry on probably, if speaking personally, I like to just use the single needle to start with because I feel like I'm more in control of it. Uh, but what I'm constantly doing is I'm constantly refining this, I'm constantly turning it. Oh, and the other thing I want to say to you is, this does not happen in five minutes. You know, that's uh, not a shock, I'm sure. Um, but you know, if you're impatient and you want this to work quickly, I often say to, to the people that come on my workshops, you know, you, it, it's going to take you a good half an hour to refine this shape okay, that you can then work on. And what you need to do is you need to refine it sufficiently so that it doesn't reduce in size anymore. So really what you want is to get it nice and firm before you start doing anything else. Um, 
and that and, and it's always tempting to, to move on too quickly with anything that you make but I think that often happens a lot with felting it's tempting to just think oh yeah I'm just going to put the eye on now but um, if you do that well you can but, but if you put the eye on now if I kept stabbing in the same place with the eye it will indent so that's how it works where you stab it gets smaller basically so to start with where we're stabbing you can can you see as I'm just wanting to just lose that bit sticking out the end there I'm just using the needle and going in at the end I'm going around the sides and I'm just refining 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 and then as soon as I do that it kind of makes another bit stick out on the other side so I'm going to go back in and all the time I'm conscious that I want to keep it a fish shape I don't want it to, to turn into a sausage and I don't want it to turn into um, anything else that shape stop it don't even stop I was trying to think of another example <laughs> anyway um, so so this is what I would carry on doing obviously I'm not going to sit here and do this for half an hour so here's one I prepared earlier which I I think I showed you earlier actually so here's one where I've I've really refined this end of it quite significantly actually because it's really firm and hard but this end of it is still puffy all right so once this is worked on and worked on and worked on and worked on it it becomes like this and then here's another one where I've pretty much got it ready to go in terms of adding all of the details and the designs and the the pretty bits the bits we like because we like decorating things and making it look as it's meant to look and of course once you get to this point the next thing really that most people want to do is um, start adding bits and bobs to it. Now I'm not going to go into how you, well I might do if we've got time, uh, talk about the flat pieces for fins and, and, and these and tails here. I want to really just talk to you about the decorations and how to go about those. So as soon as you add an eye, it becomes <laughs> it becomes something that you need to give a name to doesn't it and it's something that you can't then start again from so that's perfectly understandable but then adding these designs onto it as well there's all sorts of different options here with um, stripes and so on and spots um, what have we got here more spots I just want to talk to you really about how to add a detail to this okay so what I think I'll do is I'm just going to add another stripe to this fish here just so you can see how I go about it and then I will also just show you how to add the Angelina fibre and an eye so what I've got here is the tiniest 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 piece of wool um, it's really hardly anything this is what you need but what I want to show you is that as you then stab this into the shape using again I'm, I'm now just using the 38 gauge star profile needle all right as I stab this in it kind of disappears into the foam can you see and then I've got a wispy bit here just guide this to where you want it to be it will only stay where you stab all right it's ever so easy to do you know this isn't rocket science but there's just a few key things to remember the first one is the air in the wool when you're shaping the second one here is um, stabbing the wool in it will disappear into it so if that isn't sufficient for you then you need to start with more or you need to add a second piece okay if you don't like what you've done you can just tease it off again, which is rather handy, I must say. And then if you want to do something like an eye, let me just grab a little piece of pink wool here, just using the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest bits, okay? And I would just get that roughly circular before you start to stab it in. Obviously, we don't want another eye there. I've done, let's do it, let's do it in the middle of its body. Obviously, that's not where you would normally do it. Um, I'm going to stab it in and again it only stays where you stab yes so as you can see because I'm just conscious of the fact that I want it to be round and I want it to be just here I'm just stabbing I'm actually only stabbing look the first sort of centimeter of the needle in and out the barbs go all the way down to the bottom there so I'm just stabbing that bit in and it's attaching it very nicely but as you can see it's not looking um, opaque enough so I would then get another little piece of wool and I would simply do the same thing again over the top. All right. So just build it up a little bit. If you use too much wool at once, it will protrude and stand proud of the shape. 
all right? So I'm going to just talk you through that now. If you want something to be indented and you want that to be a feature, okay, that's what you would do. You would stab more here down these lines to cause this to protrude. Actually, I've got another thing I just want to show you. I'm just going to grab it here. If I can just open this up quickly and get this out. Here we go. So this is a little pumpkin I made. And you can see this, this is where I've stabbed more. So it's indented it here as I've been going around. Same thing with the fish, okay? So the more you stab in, the more it indents. That will happen less the more you've originally refined it by. It will happen more if it's very, very puffy. So I've got a very, very puffy one that I just started. So if I just show you what I mean by just constantly stabbing back and forth. How are we doing for time, Chris? Uh, half an hour. Okay, so if I constantly stab back and forth here, you can see how that's going in. And then obviously, if I then chose a colour to put down that line, it's going to add a stripe and indent it at the same time. And that's, what's I've, that's what I've done here, all right? So with the eye, the more you stab it in, the more it will disappear. But if you wanted to then use um, a lot more wool, I'm just gonna show you what would happen if you wanted to build up something. I've, I think in my first book, I'll show you in a second, there's a cat toy that I make completely from needle felting. And I build up these little um, balls on the side of it. I should have got that ready to show you, but I'm, I can thumb through it and find it because it's quite interesting if that is what you'd like to do. Okay. Shall I get your assistant to find it for you? Uh, if you want to. I can pass you the book. It's in here. Actually, I was joking. Oh. <laughs> But whilst I anyway, have your attention, yeah, Kirsty on. Ruby on Instagram yeah. was asking about uh, if you mess up doing your main body of yes. the, the object, yes. can you reuse the wool? Yes, you can. I mean, if you've stabbed it a lot, then you would, you would have more trouble unravelling it. But sometimes what you could do is squidge it together and then you can wrap more around it. So... OK, let me move on to talking about that briefly for, for a minute. If you find that you've got to this point and the shape's not quite right and it is a bit puffy, if you get some more wool, you can then encase it in more wool and perhaps roll it up t more tightly using the new wool as an outer casing. I hope that's helpful to know. I think it is because... Um, it saves you having to start from scratch and obviously you can use the wool inside and you're just adding a new bit on the outside. That's especially helpful. I was going to talk to you a bit about doing birds and adding shapes to other shapes. So um, it's less important with the fish because obviously the fish is very, very simple and it just tapers towards the end. But yes, you could definitely do that. Um, uh, I'm just going to quickly finish off this um, this eye here and, and just I just wanted to show you how that's kind of standing proud. Now, if you wanted that to stand proud more, then you would just simply get another piece of wool and build it up and build it up and build it up. I'm just going to quickly see if I can find the cat toy to show you, which should be in the set. Here we go. All right. Can everyone see that? So you can see that these little balls on, on the cat toy, I think it had a bell in the middle of it, and then I built up the needle felted uh, shape around it, and then obviously the designs, but yes, it's got these, these little sort of nobbles, for want of a better word, on the side. And the way those have been done is by building them up, um, I'm just going to put that over there, uh, in this way. So you would just keep adding more and more wool and make a sort of bauble shape coming out of it. Okay. Now, moving on from fish. So obviously, if you've managed to do this shape and you've refined it and then you've decorated it and you've made your fish, okay, um, what we do, what I do on my workshop, workshop that I run here is we then go on to birds in the afternoon. And um, there's lots of birds that I've made. Let me just show you a couple. This one's from my book, Carnival of Felting, um, as is this one here. I do, we have a robin kit, we make robins, but the more sort of usual um, birdie shape is what I'm talking about here. So there's a couple here. So I'm just now gonna replace the fish 
with some birds, okay, here, um, and just talk you through this. So when you're starting to roll the shape up for the bird, it's done in a very similar way, but on one side of it, you're still doing essentially what could be the fish, and it's just tapering to a point. But on the other side, you need to make a bird's head. So you're bringing the wool round and forming a sort of bulbous shape on one side, but then needle felting it in exactly the same way after that. Um, then I would move on to talking to you about how you would then, once you've got the shape sorted, when you've got the bulbous shape on one side, it's still tapering out like this. You're then gonna needle felt down into the back of it, okay, to try and form a belly, okay. So this is kind of, you're moving on from that sort of simple starting point of the fish and you're try, just making things a little bit more complex. And then you'd be, I'm just gonna put it on the, on the foam here now and talk you through, maybe using the multi-needle tool here, stabbing down into the back of the bird, and then coming up um, and making that tail shape is what you're after here, okay? Now, often when people start to do this with the bird, they struggle to get this belly sufficiently. So I just wanted to talk to you about adding shapes onto other shapes. Um, let me show you it first on the camera head on. So what I've done here is I've got a bird shape, okay? I've needle felted quite heavily down into the back and formed a tail. So actually it probably would have worked as it was, but I just want to show you how I've then taken another piece of wool, added it on. So it's almost like you're sculpting, you know, like if you were using clay and armature and stuff and you're sticking bits of clay on to make the shape that you're after. This is similar obviously you're using wool and your means of attaching it is using the felting needle. So with this, what I did was I just got a piece of wool that I wanted to uh, use for adding on and then almost like made it into a little sausage shape and then um, decided, like looked at it and decided where it should sit. And then once I was happy with it, then I just started to needle felt on like this okay so once you've done that obviously I've used two different colors just to show you that it's different and it's a different bit that I've added on but once it's on you could then take one color or if you've used the same color you could then take some more wool lay it over the top like this and hide the join and make it all as one okay so you shouldn't need to do that but if you do that is a good method of getting your shape right before you start okay and so if you're going to move on to make other little things like let's take this one for example the dog I mean the full instructions are in the kit but this is made I think because I made it a long time ago um, in, in separate, obviously you're adding little legs and things and obviously if you're making bunnies and dogs and stuff you are going to need different body parts so it's about thinking about how to get all of those shapes right and then join them together. And joining things together is easy. Joining things together is you're just using your felting needle to join the different shapes together using fresh wool if necessary. It's worth noting that using new wool is almost like using glue. Okay, so if you've got two shapes that you do want to join together, if you put new wool along the join and then stab that in, it joins the shapes together very effectively. Okay, um, and I would say that about, you know, like if you're doing the, the beak of the bird, which is very fiddly, we've got a bird kit as well called Chirpy Chappy if you want to have a go doing um, a bird. This is one of our best sellers, it's very popular and it comes with a little clip so you can clip them onto something. But just as an example, when you do the beak, you attach the beak and it might look a bit messy around the edge of the beak. So you, what you do is you just get a new piece of wool and you just wrap it around the, the base of the beak there. Obviously, I've used a different colour. And then you stab that in and it, adds, it, it, it serves as glue, but it also neatens it up as well. So you can constantly refine and shape using new wool. So I've talked to you about um, the main things here, which is make it the key thing with all of this always is making sure there's not too much air in the wool that you use okay that's the key thing so that starting point has got to be as firm as possible and then you're constantly refining it using the felting needle to, until it's really quite firm i mean not rock hard like a bullet but as firm as you can get it it will still have a little bit of give in. It needs to have a little bit of give in it because you're then going to attach your designs and your stripes, your spots, whatever it is you're doing, and um, and your eyes. 
and whatever it is that you want to add on. But make sure it's nice and firm to start with. That's really such, a, that's my top tip uh, for making any of these kinds of things. I'm just going to quickly run through you the other kits that we sell. If you want to have a go, oh, have you got a question? Lisa Helsing would like to see a close-up mm. of one of the eyes. Oh, right, okay. On, on a bird or a fish? Uh, I oh, we don't, don't think know. it matters All so right. much. So, oh, do you want me to use this camera here? I yeah, think. let's use that. All right, so here's a little eye. Let's use this fish eye. That's a good one. Okay, so what I've done here is I've done yellow, um, made it nice and circular, then I've outlined it with orange, and then I've done a little pink bit in the middle. OK, but, you know, I mean, when you're doing this, if it doesn't work the first time, you can pick it off and start again. That's only got one eye, that one. So there's some eyes for you. Hopefully that's helpful. And then um, on the birds as well. There's the um, eye and the beak on the bird from my book. OK, so you can see. Hopefully that's OK. That's and then there's another eye here peeking up at me. He's in my book as well. He was he was hanging off something and um, it was it, when we were doing the shoot and I had so much stuff to make that I actually only made half of him. He's bare on the other side, poor thing. So um, so hopefully that shows you that. And also, oh, one more thing, actually. Sorry, chopping and changing cameras. This is our kit called um, Fiesta Fandangle. Now, this is a really nice kit to make. You make wet felt the balls, actually, with soap and water. But then can you see it's like lots of fish eyes, actually. Um, there's all these lovely designs that you needle felt onto the balls. I mean, it's it's meant to be a bracelet kit. Hang on, let me go back to, the, to me. It's meant to be a bracelet kit. Let me let me model it for you um, with giant giant balls. But I think the other nice thing for this is a light pull. Well, it could be a necklace too, actually, to be fair, if you strung it on something longer. Anyway, it's a kit. You could turn it into whatever you like, but it comes with all of these colours. This kit has so many colours in it. And, oh, Angelina, I need to show you about the Angelina. Right, so this has got, if you just go to the overhead shot, Chris, this has got the Angelina needle felted into it, and I've completely forgotten to show you that. So let's get my other fishy that I was working on back here. Let's use this one. Let me get some of this watermelon, Angelina. Good name. All right, and I'm just going to show you, you don't need too much of it, by the way, but I'm just going to show you how you can just stab this in. Hang on, let me put it into a, like say you were putting it in the eye. Let me use the correct needle as well, that would help. Here we go. Here we go. Am I in the right place, Chris, for Instagram? Yeah. There? Is that better? Can you see? Right, and, and then sometimes you will end up with a few of these strands hanging off. But look, that's just needle felted right in. It's so pretty. So, yes, I'm um, going back to this. That has got some Angelina in the kit as well. All right. And then um, I just want to show you my sardine as well. Look, this sardine maybe we'll do a separate session making a sardine everyone loves this a, sardine why don't you do a little close-up of oh, your sardine okay all right tin. all right so this sardine um has got peacock angelina running down the center of it hopefully you can see that okay and if you do want to make the sardine i think i've used the color called smoke at the top here that we sell and then this is white and then there's a lime green um, I should do a sardine kit, shouldn't I? I mean, everyone loves the sardine. Or maybe we'll do a sardine session and I'll put a kit, a kit together for it. So, yeah, that's the sardine. All right, so I just wanted to quickly run through our other kits. That's Fiesta Fandangle. If you're into cats, I mean, I tend to find people are either into cats or dogs. I mean, I'm into dogs, but I know lots of people are into cats. We have a cat brooch, okay. I was very proud of the name of this. It's called Captain Catpin. Good name. Uh, then Monsieur Saucisson, a perennial favourite, okay, just a little sausage dog, it's, he's about, oh look, I've got them here, useless, I'm useless at remembering everything, I've got them, okay, so this is Monsieur Saucisson, okay, so he's that big, sorry, quite a lot of reflection, stop there, and then I've got um, Gwendolyn Penguin up here, because I can't see what I'm doing now, let me put that down, let me put that down, I'm just going to show you the kits, because the pictures are on the kits, Gwendolyn Penguin is just a little penguin, really cute, very popular, oh Monsieur Saucisson, we were going to rename him Mr Sausage after they voted for Brexit, honestly, uh, but we didn't, we've decided to keep the, the French name, and then um, Flirty Gertie, 
very sweet little brooch, summery brooch. So if you don't, if you're thinking, why would I make a little dog? What am I going to do with it? Fair enough. Little brooch, nice little summery brooch. Nice idea. Comes with a little pin, brooch back. That's the word. Are you putting your hand up because there's a question, or are you stretching? I was just warming up to a question that I I didn't notice, which is from Lulu on Instagram. Okay. Um, yes. Talking about the bird, I suppose. Yes. Um, when do you attach the wire for the legs? Oh, this one. Yes. Okay. So this is oh, it's such a pain because this is in my book, but it's out of print at the moment. I really wish they'd reprint it. Anyway, what you can use for the legs are felting needles. I know. So once you've finished it, you can insert two felting needles as the feet. However, if you want to use wire, you would do that right at the end. You can use the felting needles to get your point of balance of where it will stand up. So if you stick them in and then you sort of mess about with where it will stand, and then you can use the, 38 ga uh, the 36 gauge triangular needle to really stab in, stab in, stab in and make a good hole. And then you would insert your wire. Now I've, I've used like, literally garden wire or whatever you want to call it, um, but wrapped round with yarn. That's what I've used here. Okay, so I literally just wrapped it with yarn, stuck it all a bit with your good old gem tack, and then stuck it into the bird. Okay, so do it afterwards. I did this one as well, and it's and I've I don't know if you can see. Hang on, let me use my special close-up cam. I need to think of a name for this camera. Look, look at its feet. You can see. So I've I've turned round the toes and gone back with the wire and then up again. Um, and the same on this one. Look at its little feet, they're so cute. Okay, so that's, yes, that's how you would do the birdie's feet. But our bird kit doesn't come with anything to do that. It literally just comes with a clip, just to make that clear. And I couldn't find it. I went to try and find it this morning to show you and it's flown away somewhere. I don't know where it is. Oh, and this, if you want to do the fish that I've been talking about, um, I haven't got the kit packet here, but this is our kit fish also a very good name submersible i can't say it submersible percival submersible is that the right way of saying it? yeah anyway that's our fish kit all right and that's the brooch there okay hopefully you can see it any more questions about needle felting chris yes. come on um pay attention where are we What's i don't this? know this is facebook um ruth hatch mm -hmm. hi Gillian. hello Hi, Gillian. Hello. Yes. Can you tell me what needles are in your kit, please? Ah, yes. We always include the 38 gauge star needles in our kit. So if you wanted those bigger, coarser 36 gauge triangulars, you would need to buy them separately. And we do sell them separately, either singly or in tens or in fifties or in hundreds. OK, so they're on our website under felting. Um, but yeah, all of our kits, if you went for the basic starter needle felting kit, it comes with four 38 gauge star needles. Or oh, another thing about that, with the gauge numbers, the higher the number, the finer the needle. Okay, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. I think sewing needles might work the same way, to be fair. But yeah, the higher the number, 38 is finer than 36. So if you, yeah. Okay, that's all. Any more? Whoops. Any more questions? Yeah. Um, a question from Chris sitting the other side, not on social media. That's me. Oh, a question yeah. from you. Yes, I have a question. Yeah. Could you make some sort of form, out, I don't know, out of polystyrene or oh, something Oh, that's something like I that, haven't talked about. Yes, yes. Which I actually thought when I had looked at your fish that's how they were made so no they made a shape no and some people do use these um what happens though if you're using a polystyrene shape and you're just wrapping wool around it it makes it very difficult to needle felt into and you will most likely break your needles so i have never done that i've always found it much much easier just to use wool as the core the other question i often get asked is do you use a different wool for the core of your shape that you're making um like, I think people usually ask me that because they want to know if I'm using a cheaper wool for the core. So, for example, did I use a cheaper wool in the core of this fish? No. <laughs> Apart from anything else, we don't really 
sell cheaper wools. I mean, we um, one of our wools might be slightly cheaper than the merino, but you're talking insignificant amounts here. The whole thing weighs hardly anything. It's four pounds sixty for hundred grams. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube in ten years' time, it might have gone up, but at the moment it is. So you know, it's just not worth talking about. No, just use the same wool all the way through it. And personally. I don't use polystyrene shapes. And I know that some people like to try and do this kind of thing using cookie cutters as well. So they might, you might get a cookie cutter shape for a bird and then you basically put the wool in it and just stab in the cookie cutter. I believe that that's effective. It's not something I've ever done myself personally, but yes, you could do it. Yes. Uh, another question from Instagram. Yes. How do you join a beak? Is there an application yeah. form or uh, <laughs> subs each week? Oh, God, he's just so funny. You should be on the stage. There's one leaving in about 10 minutes. Da, 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 da. Right, okay, go to the overhead. Right, so we're making a beak, making the beak, making the beak. Where have all my needles gone? This is a prime, prime example um, for using two needles and not your fingers. Okay, so you're fashioning a beak, all right. When you have fashioned your beak and you get to this point, you need to leave it fluffy at one end so that it's very fiddly. You hold it against the bird and then you are literally stabbing around the base of it here, okay. And then what you're doing, like I suggested, earlier is getting some more of the same colour, wrapping it round like this and then stabbing it in. Oh, that looks quite fetching actually, doesn't it? Stabbing it in and that makes it um, look much neater. It gives you a neater line here around the edge. All right, so that's beaks. I've just noticed something that I was meant to be showing you that I'm just going to grab quickly because I completely forgot. It sounds like a cup of tea. A cup of tea. Um, it's uh, the project from my latest book called Easy Stuff to Make with Fluff. Sorry, I had to think about that for a second. Um, and it's a pincushion. Ta-da! Now, this is a great... It's meant to be stuck in here, but it's not. Um, this is a great big needle felted ball that I made. And what you do is you stick it in a teacup and it acts as a pincushion. How cool is that? That's a project in my book easy stuff to make with fluff and it also shows you how to make the little there's another toadstool in the shot actually in the book I don't know what's happened to it but it shows you how to make the, the toadstool as well so I just wanted to show you that little pincushion idea in a teacup as well right any more questions or should I talk about what I'm going to do next week No. You think no. you've done them all. If we've missed one, I apologise. I will I will scout through all of them on Instagram and Facebook and make sure... Oh, sorry, yes. There is a question. Oh, there, there is a question. Sorry, go on, There yes. is a question. You'll like this question. Yeah. What glue do you use? Oh, yes, we use gem... Why will I like it? Because I like talking about this glue. I love talking I about I love this tech. glue. I love it, I love so it, I love it. it. Get a room. <laughs> this is a really wrinkled old bottle of it, sorry. It's not a brand new one. Anyway, uh, it's really cool. It just sticks everything to everything. I use it, stick metal to felt, felt to metal, felt to felt. It's great. Stick the legs in to the bird. Use this. We sell it on the website. Gem tack. Okay. Recommended. Sorry, what's it called? Gem tack. Stop it. Right. Next week, I am... I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner, actually. I'm going to show you how to make the Mexican hearts. So a few years ago at Christmas, we went to Mexico and I got very obsessed with these, came back and started to make quite a lot of them. This one's got wings. Ta -da! So they're made from felt, OK, and they are embroidered and they have tassels at the bottom. All right. So I'm going to show you how I do this. I'm going to show you how I do this uh, rose and stitches next week and how you make them and how to make a little tassel as well. Um, if you want to get involved with that, I've just got a few bits and bobs that I'll be using. I'll be using, oh sorry, I can't stand up, can I, because of the camera today. Right, I'll be using uh, ready-made felt. So we sell this in either a little mini pack like this or um, a bigger pack like that, okay. I tend to use yarn darners or chenille needles to do the embroidery, okay. Depends what yarns you're going to use. So on this one, for example, I've used yarns like, 
I think they're double knit yarns or four ply yarns. OK, if you want to, you could also just use embroidery threads. And we sell these fabulous packs of embroidery threads, which would be ideal for this. OK, there's flower box, frosting and rainbow packs of those. If you wanted to buy a yarn pack as well, you could use a yarn pack to do it. So obviously it's quite a lot of yarn to just, well, it depends how many you're going to make. Um, but if you don't have any yarn or embroidery threads, that's what I would recommend getting. Now I will show you how to make the tassels for, again from yarn. So you might just want to get some Stylecraft or some Rico or one of our uh, cheaper brands or by all means buy the more expensive ones <laughs> but just thinking out loud that's probably what I'd use or we do sell ready-made tassels as well so those, there's some options there I'll put it on social media what you'll need um, and I'll send out a newsletter about it tomorrow as well but they're so pretty I think we're nearly nearly at an hour so I better shut up because they'll um, cut me off in my prime okay Mexican hearts next week see you then any more for any more? No more questions? Looking at me blankly. Week. Oh. Are we, have oh. I not booked you oh. for next have week? You booked, have you booked the crew for next week? Have you? <laughs> um, you haven't, have you? No. You, you haven't. <laughs> no. You mentioned it. It might just be me on my phone next week. Yeah. Like it pointing be. it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, well, see, I, I will, I'll be here. I don't know what I'll be filming it on, but I'll, say, I'll see you next week for Mexican Hearts. All right? Okay. Bye. Thanks for tuning in.